put you on this earth and he gave you dominion he says be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and subdue it whether or not you do that as a child of god is up to you if all you want to do is believe the gospel and wait for the coming of christ you're going to go to heaven no one else should be fascinated about production like the one who believes god exists Good morning guys so it's wednesday and um, this is about 8 30 ish yeah my brother is there and i want to quickly help him shoot something all right so you're going to shoot now that's him i don't see the way you love me no be sherry sherry because you're for me me i go there for you you never leave now why i go there with you let's keep another episode on monday and tuesday i want to get that done this morning i have to get it done this morning i don't give myself a update so i am done with Bible study and it's 12 21 now and I have to be in church in the evening yeah I think that would be about all but I want to get to work now it's past four this is at 4 30 already yeah I was able to get some things done, take some things off my to-do list and now I'm going to church. I'm running quite late already. So what are the things I've done today? The logo animation, I was able to do some, make some changes here. There's still some things that they want to correct but I told them when I come back from church, I'll get that done. Then also, I started editing this vlog and I did one more thing. I really cannot remember. I cannot remember. But then, I attend Celebration Church and today's midweek service so I'm just going to so I'm finally in church, yeah, I'm quite late, but I'm going to quickly wash upstairs, probably till the end of service before you see my face again. Hi, ah, good morning, people of God. It's Thursday, and I woke up quite early this morning. I've had to put in some work for delivery by up this morning. So I had to wake up to get to work, which is unlike me. I've been trying my best not to be doing that, right? But then I had to do that this morning. I'm morning later, I need to go and deliver something to someone quickly. I think I'm done with the work I'm doing. So I'll just come back. I send it to some people for review, then send it to who I'm supposed to send it to. So yeah, living alone, you have to take care of your bills, especially when you're working here. No one expects you to ask them for money anymore, you know, I just think so. So I wanted to go and pay my bills this morning. That's about 10k for last month. Yeah, but I got the and duty bank here to mess up. So I'll probably return, maybe today or tomorrow. So I guess this will be breakfast. Whenever I think of food again, I'm gonna eat. I stay in Ibadan. I've been here since 2017 when I got here to school. But I started staying on my own in 2020. That's at when I was 20 years. I'm 24 now. And I tell you, there's been a lot of learning. There's been a lot of responsibilities that I have had to take. There's been a lot of bold moves that I have had to take. And I must tell you, it's been God, especially now. But thank God for preservation for us in Goshen. So yeah, I'm going out now to pay the electricity bill and that's not exactly why I'm going out here. Yeah? I'm going to get fail and when I'm done paying the bill, I'm going to get it and head back. So that's one of the, as I said earlier, the bills are on you. So now there's no light. I need to work. I need to shoot. I have to go and get fail. It's a lot. My dad and mom come and pick me. But then at the end of the day, one would say you have to live this kind of life where you have to sort things yourself, take on more responsibilities. You get what I mean. Speaking of responsibilities, I didn't think it would ever be a thing for me because I grew up learning how to not depend on people for sustenance. But lately it's been somehow, and when I say I'm trying to get my life back together, that's what I mean. I usually like to have my life ordered. I know what I am doing today, I know what I'm doing tomorrow, I know what I'm doing in the next two months and what i'm doing in the next three months uh, but i guess i came into the year with a lot of energy and i dispensed all of that energy i began to drown backstory about two months ago i was posting back to back trying to build my audience on instagram trying to grow on instagram doing a lot of work staying up through the night and just trying to make sure at the end of the year i could say that i gave it my best and i put my best into trying to go little did i know that something was waiting for me in front and what was it i think i was able to do about 25 to 30 days of post back to back you can go to my instagram page you know what i'm talking about but at the point it began to get not overwhelming 
women, but it began to get really addictive. And I didn't know that I really could get addicted to something like that. What was I addicted to? I was addicted to the algorithm. I wanted to see the views. I wanted to see it with a wide audience. So I kept going back. I post the next hour I'm going, I'm refreshing. Sometimes I go to bed around five and by the time I'm going to bed, I am exhausted. It was like that's back to back. Some days I chose, you know, to bat shoot, but then that wasn't helping. The moment I wake up, I'm on Instagram. Oh, how far has it gone? How is it doing? There's a particular video of mine that had to do with friendship. One that I knew had a tendency to go viral and because of shares, because I know people would want to share it. And it did not entirely viral, but it did better than my other videos. And I spoke to a friend just to get assessment. I asked her, okay, what do you think I am doing wrong? What do you think I'm doing right? How do you think I can improve? And she said a lot of things, but the one that made sense to me the most was that okay try on ads on some of your posts when she said it i was like oh how come i never thought of that not like i didn't think of it but i didn't think it was necessary right so i decided on this particular post to run an ad and it did pretty well there were a lot of shares a lot of reposts and oh i enjoyed what it looked like and i said you know what I'm going to do the same for my other videos, both on Instagram and on Twitter. So I kept doing that. When I see that a video is not doing well, I run an ad with the video. And it got pretty addictive. I kept doing that, doing that, doing that. I know ads cost money, especially when you have to convert from dollars to naira. And that was how I ran. Not a huge debt, but around $20 worth of debt. And I knew at that point that if I continue like this, it was going to end therapy so i decided to stop you know what i am done and what that period did to me was that it made me very antisocial right it became so bad i thought snapchat was my safe space because i had a close knit of friends that you know were sharing snap with each other you know what's going on in my day i update you i also get updates from you as is the custom but I knew that it was getting very bad when I was sending blank snaps for weeks, for about a month now, right? And you know what that suggests? It's like a distress call, you know? I, I was very antisocial. I didn't want to relate with anybody. I didn't want to be in public spaces where I knew people that knew me. Like, I just wanted to be alone. And the only place I found what I would call my safe space was in the church. And that was because there were a lot of people that knew me. Even people that knew me were not so much right it got really overwhelming particular episode i had was after like two months i wanted to post this two months i'm talking about august september after like two months i wanted to post on whatsapp i was literally panicking i got really anxious and i'm like isn't it just to post it got so bad at that point i knew you know what i thought even at that point i thought i was getting better my posting on whatsapp was a test to see how well i was with the old social thing and but it wasn't just working not until recently i am trying i am trying i am trying and one thing that i really do appreciate is that through that period my definition of friendship i was able to redefine it now there are two sides to this one of it is that it's people that you think do not care are the ones that at times you do not expect they show you the love the most and for those people in particular what i've tried to do what i noticed i've tried to do for some of them is that they especially those that were on snapchat maybe they saw the distress call and you know got the signal and decided to respond but then people that i thought you know had invested so much in in time in relationship not necessarily romantic now that invested so much in in time you know, in money and gifting and i'm like you know i am not like this it's not like i expect anything from you guys but at least now that's why i said there are two sides to this now they may come and be like everyone is going through their own shit right and it's not compulsory we talk every day i'm an advocate for that you don't need to talk every day for you to be my friend but then okay there's another side to this where you don't tell me what's happening so how am i supposed to know that that's why i said there are a lot of sides to this you know um one that I, I consider myself by my own evaluation i consider myself to be very selfless like do things for people even at your own detriment you need to get something but you won't consider yourself first you consider yourself last once this person gets it you know you're thinking oh this person needs this thing more not necessarily money maybe needs something that will help him to cultivate a skill help the person to go or an emergency i will put myself as the last option and make sure you are okay but you know i can't be everyone's savior now this is not trying to blow my trumpet i'm sure there are a lot of people like this and some of you would agree with me I'm, i can't be everyone's savior and i was now stuck in between i think i've been selfless 
a lot, especially this year. I won't be selfish. At the same time, I think it's a good lesson for me. I'm thanking God that I could say it's late already, but it's not later than now that I'm beginning to learn it. Generally, can't be your go-to person when you need something every time and you're guaranteed that you're going to get from him. I, I find it difficult to see someone in need and not to respond. But then, at my own detriment, whether it's exceeding my budget, you know, I, we budget these things and I have my own money I want to use for myself. My budget for my generosity is exceeded and you just come, you need something, then they can always be the one to give you what you need. God has helped me this far. I'm going to tone down on it a little. Again, I've said that this is not, this is not blowing my own trumpet. It's just something that I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn by crying. And it really got to me. It, it, I, I wouldn't necessarily, depression is a strong word, but I just had a relapse mentally. For those two months, I just wanted to be alone. For a while, I was just thinking I want to run away. I, I just want to run away for two months. Nobody knows where I am. Nobody knows what I'm doing. I just want to be away. A lot of, a lot of things that happened back to back anyways that made it be this way. But then, that's about this. And I know that my life, I was literally disorganized during that period. And one of the ways that I know that I am in a good state of mind is if you come to my space, if you come to my studio, if you come to my bedroom, if you come to my house, my kitchen, if you meet it disorganized then you there's a 90 percent chance that i'm in a bad place mentally I, that's one simple act i don't know if this is a good thing guys let me know guys please let me know i am not one as i said earlier i have learned not to get my sustenance from people not to depend on people not to get my validation from people that has crept in into my problem solving ability too i think that when something happens my first instinct is not to speak with anyone my first instinct is to take a break you know draw back and take it to god in prayer i don't know if this is a good thing i don't know how well it works but that has been the way for me so through that period i went on a stretch of prayers i went on a retreat long stretches of bible study stretch of prayers and that was how i was able to find solace I, sometimes i would be alone in this room crying and i uh, fact is i thought i was strong you know until it gets to some things i know that you know what you can't be strong on your own you can't be strong in yourself thank god for strength and now thank god for those people put around me my family my friends i just can't begin to mention names thank god for those people that he inspired or noticed that something was wrong and reached out they were beyond encouraging solving problems on your own just you know sit back take it to god in prayer come back strengthened if there's a relapse again you keep finding strength from prayer finding strength from god's word but one thing i want us to know is that as we do that also there are people that god has put the right words in their mouth and it's now our wisdom to find out those people and get the strength we need from them i know there's the place of david encouraging himself in the lord trust me you will need that a lot of times but sometimes you just need to hear the encouragement from someone or uh, a sibling family your parents you know so i'm just saying sometimes try not to be strong you know in yourself life can get pretty overwhelming and um, life doesn't care whether you are strong enough to hold it or not that's about that so going forward i think one of my goals every single year one of my goals every single year is that i monetize my youtube channel that year but this year i came with so much energy as i said and it didn't happen especially after the relapse thing and i noticed that because i was trying to do i was trying to grow on all the platforms at once it wasn't helping and it got really demanding you know trying to go on twitter go on youtube go on instagram even tiktok go really demanding and through this period i've been able to get a wisdom i'm not going to go entirely off instagram i'm not going to go entirely off instagram but i won't be spending so much time creating content for instagram now in my mind i was like oh the camera i got the camera was it me now the camera has come and i got the lights everything so let's go the energy was there let's start creating content you know but then i didn't know that it was going to come of course i knew <laughs> i knew the work it was going to come with but i thought i was ready know to put into work so i'm just going to hold on on instagram for now if you are seeing any content it's not going to be a camera content oh i love the quality trust me but it's not going to one that i have to sit down and script and edit and do all the kind of editing i do for clients for myself you the fact is that if you have seen some of my works i want to stop doing them for myself those kind of content will probably just appeal to editors or creatives but for the kind of thing i love to do i am a teacher i love to communicate value i love to teach i love to share knowledge and 
that's what I want to be doing. My kind of content won't necessarily require that. So for now, I want to focus on YouTube. I want you to get more intimate with me, more personal into my life and share things that I learn on my journey or in my journey. By God's grace, I am here to stay now if you've been seeing any professional content it's on youtube that you'll be seeing all of them by god's grace it's going to keep evolving going to keep getting better put more intentionality into my content and i try as much as possible to release something at least once a week so yeah i think that will be about all please look forward to it please look forward to everything new that god is set to do and i am sure i'm so certain that going forward you'll get a lot of value from me you can go through my my other videos and you will see a lot of things that you know you would learn watching my other videos so if you have watched until this point thank you so much and please if you're new here let me know you in the comment section i don't know why you watched until this point but then uh, thank you so much and this is just saying please don't forget that there's someone that loves you there's someone that's intentional about you there's someone that sees you whatever it is you're going to wherever you are there's someone that sees you please never forget that my name is david you can call me general d and i will see you in the next video but if you would ask me i think i would advise it especially when you leave school i don't know but i do not think no pressure if you are in school or even when you leave school if you can live alone some people do not like it some parents do not like it you, they say you have all this luxury in your house why right? do you choose to go somewhere and live alone but i think it just shapes you faster than staying under your parents it helps you grow faster helps you take more responsibility I don't, i'm not saying when you stay with your parents it doesn't help you when you stay with people it doesn't help you. when i say living alone i'm not saying living alone you can live with someone maybe a friend or something that's what i'm doing right but i, I think and i would advise is now if i had the chance to do this again i would definitely choose this path that i am on 100 percent i enjoy it i really do enjoy it and i can't wait to even do more with someone new marriage <laughs> anyways 